The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Transcribed and presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now I should like to introduce a representative of our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Your future is his business. Security in years to come for you, your home, and your family. Tonight, our equitable representative has a very timely message for the fathers and mothers of America. In this Christmas season, most of you mothers and dads come to realize that the happiness and security of your children are of more important than anything else in life. For that reason, isn't this a most appropriate time to bring to your attention the Equitable Society's famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers? In about 14 minutes... Mr. Keating will be back to tell you what this equitable chart can mean in terms of the future security and happiness of your family. Please listen carefully, won't you? Tonight's FBI file, The Frozen Frame-Up. Most words have a definite lifespan. Remember back to the First World War and the use of the word doughboy to describe a soldier? In this past war was the ultimate in destructive power, part of our daily language, until the atomic bomb made it old-fashioned. Twenty years ago, an automobile with a canvas top was called a touring car. Today, it's a convertible and nothing else. And so it has been with many words. They were born, they lived, they died. And anyone using them now is considered quaint lost their original power. These old champions is the simple word gold. Word gold. Since its discovery in the United States, has been the stuff that dreams are made of. Its very mention in a newspaper headline commands attention, for man has never ceased his endless search for new vein. An old mine that will yield still more under the pressure of modern machinery. A small plot of ground that could make its owner a millionaire. And such is the nature of man that if one man says he has made a strike, he starts a boom, even if that strike has been in the middle of nowhere, even if that strike does not actually exist. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is only one story. A recent cry of gold. A cry that once made echoes to the far corners of the world. A cry that brings men and women from everywhere. Men and women of every kind. Tonight's file opens in a boom town in Alaska. Scattered around the edges of what passes for a main street are shacks that have been put up overnight. Shacks that are still being put up. Outside one of the shacks, a sign is just being hammered in. A sign that says Ruby's place. Inside, a tall blonde girl is talking to the bartender. Now, you got everything you need? Everything but customers, Ruby. Oh, don't worry about that. Once we open those doors tonight, you won't have time to take a smoke. That's okay with me. I don't smoke. See that you don't drink either. And don't get your fingers caught in the damper. Charlie. What? Come here. I ain't moving from this stove. Oh, it isn't that cold. Ruby, I wish you'd just once listen to me. Oh, are you still crying about not going to Florida? It's warm down there. You can play cards in the morning. You can go to the track in the afternoon. You can shoot at night. What do you want out of life? A big... Wait till you see what happens around this joint tonight. The girls will get bigger tips than that. Yeah, but I'll be out of action. Why? Look, look at my hands. Did you ever see a dealer with blue fingers? They'll get warm. Listen to you for. What am I doing here? The same as I am. You're waiting for those old bums out there to dig up a lot of gold so we can clip them for it. Meanwhile, at the office 
of a nearby FBI resident agent. A visitor has just arrived. He is Special Agent Jim Taylor. Fred Caldwell? That's right. Hello, Fred. I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, hi, Jim. Glad to know you. It's good to be here. How was your trip? Fine. Good weather all the way. I got word you were coming, but that's all. What brought you up here? Special assignment. Oh? I'm looking for a couple named Morgan. Morgan. I don't think you know them, Fred. They only got here, oh, about two weeks ago. Who are they? A man and wife team, Ruby and Charles Morgan. What's their dodge? Well, a couple of months ago in the States, Ruby Morgan picked up a young man and a quick romance followed. (laughs) Well, there's no law against that. Well, this young man was a bank messenger who delivered a factory payroll every Tuesday. One particular Tuesday, Ruby called him and told him to come to her place immediately. Matter of life and death. And she clipped him. Yeah, that's right. Only she did it by way of left field. He came by and with the payroll, five minutes later, a man came in and held him up. The man, of course, was Ruby's husband. That's right. What'd they get? 11000 mm, Not a bad day's pay. No? Yeah, I wish I could go out with you, Jim, but well, you can see this desk. Sure, sure, I understand. I'll tell you what I can do. I'll call the marshal's office and the chief of police. It'll be fine, Fred. If you'll make those calls now, I'll get going. I don't care. Look at this. What's your beef? I finally dig a guy at the bar. I get him into a game. We play three hands. I let him win the first two, I win the next. So? So then the bum gets up and says, well, mister, I guess that breaks me. And he hands me four bucks. Uh, it'll get better. Well, I ain't going to be here that long. I'm going someplace where a guy can bend down without breaking in half. I'm going... Hey, hey. Another four dollar. got to make noise. Bartender! Bartender by everybody in the house. Everybody in the house. Maybe he's oh, live. Sure. Here's my poop. Full of gold. Real gold. And I got more. Charlie, go get him. I'm going. You call that whiskey? I taste as strong as milk. Something wrong here? Uh, you the boss? Uh-huh. Oh, Eddie. Yeah, Charlie. Give him the private stock. I was just bringing it. Here. Try this. Ah, your health. Ah, well, that's what I call whiskey. <laughs> Just get into town, mister? No. Well, I ain't seen you around. I've been working my mind, working night and day on it. Just decided to dig, take a little time off and celebrate. Sure, that does you good. Feel like any particular kind of celebrating? Like uh, gambling, maybe? Well, no, I just might. Now, what do you got to offer? You like roulette? No, not quick enough. Nobody at the crap table. Crap? <laughs> That's for little boys. <laughs> uh, how about poker? Two-handed? If that's the way you like it. Like it? Why, it's the only game. Card to card, man to man, head to head. No holes barred and may the better man win. <laughs> Mister, if you want two-handed poker, let's get to playing. Busy, Fred? No, come on in. Look, I'm an artist. <laughs> When'd you find out? A little while ago. I went to every hotel here in town, and the Morgans weren't registered any place, so I drew a picture of each of them on the back of this envelope. Let's see. Yeah. A bellboy in the hotel Golden Nugget identified them. From this? <laughs> yeah. He said he heard Ruby Morgan say something about Moon River, too. Yeah, that place is a magnet for thieves. Where is it, Fred? I looked for it on the map. It's not on the map yet. They just struck gold up there a couple of months ago. Uh-huh. Well, how do I get to the place? Well, I'll take you. Good. I've got to go there myself. Just got a report in that two men knocked over the Moon River Branch Bank. Uh-huh. Hey, have you ever been there? Yeah, and it's like all other boom towns. Wherever there's gold, you find parasites. Well, how to make our thieves easier to find. Yeah. How soon can you be ready to go? I'm ready now. Okay, let me make a couple of calls and we'll be on our way. Your bet, Buck. 
Why, so it is, my boy. So it is. <laughs> well, now, let me see. Let's try $50. $50, eh? Afraid I'm going to have to raise you 50 Good boy. Makes it a real sporting game. I'll, uh, I'll up you 50 Well, I, uh, I guess I better just call you. I've got King's Wire. Is that all? <laughs> I got easies. <laughs> it's another one for me, boy. Charlie. Yeah, honey. Can I see a minute? Yeah, sure. Excuse me a second, Buck. Right ahead, son. Go right ahead. I need time to count for chips anyway. What do you want? How's it going? Oh, it's real tough. Why? Well, he's so stupid, I'm having an awful time losing to him. <laughs> Maybe you better win. Oh, it's too early for that. i got to build him up first. i got to give him a chance to pick... Oh, there you are! I thought I'd find you in one of these places, Robert. Who's he? Play I don't know. Too, huh? And after all the promises you made... Shame on you. He's talking to Buck. Get over you there. You get out of that chair, Robert, and come right home. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, Calvin. Hey, Buck, who is this guy? It's my brother, Calvin. Uh, Calvin, this is... I don't want to meet any of your gambling friends. You just come along with me. Yeah, but wait a minute. I got to cash in my chip. Well, be quick about it. I can't stand the smell of smoke and whiskey. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? I'll go on home with him now and... When he falls asleep, I'll sneak back over here as well. I'll bring a lot of cash with me. We can have a rip-snorting game. Cash it is, Buck. Robert! <clears throat> Come in, Calvin. Well, where is he? <laughs> He'll be back. He's got 600 of our money. Yeah. You think a guy like that is going to quit because he's got a 600 stuck? I don't know. Come on, Ruby. Give us our cash. Why can't you still use chips? Because he's bringing cash. We'll play table stakes. I'll build them up a little bit more and then take them. Oh, that must be him. Lay the dough out. Okay. Hello, partner. Well, come on in. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, sir... I sure put one over on Calvin this time. <laughs> he didn't hear you come out? <laughs> no, sir. He was sleeping like a wintertime bear. <laughs> well, howdy, ma'am. Hi. Well, you all set for a game? Yep, it's all laid out. Good boy, good boy. Did you bring cash? Uh, my pockets are crammed with it. Well, yeah, then let's go. <laughs> Mind if I watch? Oh, she ain't on, girlie. Might bring me luck. Now, uh, what would you oh, like to... Oh, it's Calvin. Your brother? Yeah. Open up, my head. Well, what do we do? Uh, it turn off the lights. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Go get them, Ruby. Open up this door and I'll knock it down. That's better. The dark in here, he may go away. Uh, I don't know. He's a tough customer. Um, you got a back door, partner? Yeah. Where? Next to the bar. Well, if I can feel my way over there, I'll have a moose. We'll play tomorrow night. Oh, Buck. He just went out the back door. Oh. I'll put on the light. You can go square the brother now. Right. Nobody here. Ruby. Ruby. What? Ruby. Did you put a cash on the table? Well, yeah, why? That old bum just took it with him out the back door. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now here comes an individual who seems to have all the earmarks of a happy man. Big smile, bright eyes, elastic step. Am I right, Paul? Is the world treating you pretty well these days? Well, Mr. Keating, you'd be happy too if you'd done what I've done. Got rid of a ten-year worry in less than ten minutes. And you know what did it? It's little chart and equitable society representative handed to me. You mean the equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers? That's it. Okay, Paul. Now suppose you tell us just what that worry was and how this chart helped end it. It was this way, Mr. Keating. I'd be feeling perfectly cheerful and suddenly the worry would pop into my head. Suppose you should die tomorrow, Paul Wilton, I'd say to myself. Here's your wife with two young children, your paycheck stops, and how much money is she going to need every month? Until those two kids finish high school. Paul, not one man in 50 knows the answer to that question. 
And that's where this fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers comes into the picture. Ten minutes with this chart and a man knows what his family would need for a decent standard of living until the children graduate from high school. He has a sound and reliable basis on which to figure up the minimum expense. What's more, it's simplicity itself. Every step is made absolutely clear by easy-to-understand pictures. My wife and I really enjoyed filling it in. Uh, Paul, let me ask you this. If you'd had to buy that chart, how much would you be willing to pay? Well, I don't know, Mr. Keating. Peace of mind is worth a lot of money. Actually, of course, it didn't cost a cent. Yes, this chart is just one of many services available from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. It costs you nothing and does not obligate you in any way. Just drop a hint to any representative of the Equitable Society, and he'll be glad to see that you get a copy. Or send a postcard care of this ABC station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's spelled E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Frozen Frame-Up. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation once more illustrates an important point about crime. It knows no geography. No place, however barren, however remote, is free from crime or free from the depredations of our criminal population. They roam like prospectors for gold in search of a market for their crime. And wherever there are people, they find that market. Ten years ago, your FBI had a total of four million fingerprint arrest records on file. Today, those same files contain the records of 8 million people, an increase of 100%. Ten years ago, one person in every 35 had such a record. Today, one person in every 19 among us has been arrested for a violation of the law. That kind of an avalanche must be stopped, and it can be stopped. Your FBI has never given up hope that the criminal can be conquered. But to win this fight against him, law enforcement needs the help of every decent citizen needs help to see to it that there is an adequate police force available so that a situation such as exists in tonight's case, a situation where a single resident agent must patrol an entire town, will not occur again. Given the manpower and one other thing, law enforcement agencies can conquer the crime wave. That other thing, and victory cannot be won without it, is your moral support so that police everywhere know that not only are they on the side of decent people, but also that decent people are on their side. Tonight's file continues in the Moon River Branch Bank. Special Agent Taylor has just entered. Fred, I've got bad news for both of us. Oh? And those men you came up here to find, aren't they? The uh, Buchanan brothers? Yes, and I know your bad news. Huh? They left town last night and stole a ski-equipped auto to make the getaway. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, the Morgans were not after them, and they all tie in. How? Well, when the Morgans hit Moon River, they opened a saloon, a clip joint. Uh-huh. Last night, one of the Buchanan brothers came in. He played some cards with Charlie Morgan. That was a mistake. No, on the contrary, Fred. He clipped Morgan for everything he had. Where'd you get this? From the bartender who worked at the saloon. Both Morgans lit out after the brothers. Seems they know where the two men are going. what they use for transportation? A dog sled. Fred, let's find out where the Buchanans lived. If we can get a lead at their place or Morgan's saloon, we might nail all four of them. <laughs> you know, Calvin, I I just been thinking about that fellow we clipped. <laughs> you should have seen him deal cards. He was digging nail ridges in them cards deep enough to drive a truck through. <laughs> Even then, he couldn't cold deck me. Why, do you know, Calvin, at the last four hands we played, I was cutting the markings for him to deal to me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the white stone turn just around that high bank. There. I know. <sighs> well, sir, won't be long before we're on that airplane heading back to the States. <laughs> Aren't you kind of looking forward to that, Calvin? <laughs> Us going to Florida and... Instead of being up here with the cold Alaska winds? <laughs> yeah, sure. Say, what's eating you? Nothing. Oh, oh, now I know you better than that, Calvin. You've been brooding ever since we got in this contraption. 
What is it? Well, might as well tell you. Something awful's happened to me. What? Well, the last four or five jobs we've done, it's been more or less the same. You've been drinking and carousing. I've been the mean brother who didn't approve of it. Yeah? Well, this morning, just before we left, I went for a good stiff jolt to sort of help this ride along. I poured it, put it to my lips, and so help me, I found myself dashing the whole glassful right on the floor. Calvin. Tried it four times. Each time, same result. No. Buck, don't you see what's happened? I took off my part so good, now I'm really living it. Well, that is a problem. Here, you need this. Huh? And just because it's good. <laughs> well, that fixed you, didn't it? Huh? Well, you old fool, you just took a big slug of rum. Why, so I did. Sure. I tell you what, Calvin. Just so there's no danger of you getting that feeling again, when we get to Florida, I'll be the mean old brother. I ain't pulling this thing. Talk to the dogs. It'd do me just as much good. What do you want me to do? Get out and carry you? I can't move. I'm a human icicle. Yell, mush, mush. Coming up here was your idea. You yell. What are you mad at me for? You're the one who got clipped. I couldn't have got clipped if I wasn't here, could I? Make believe you got clipped in Florida. Should I make believe I'm sunburned too? Oh, shut up. Hey, dogs! Push you something, will you? Charlie, I just thought of something. When we get to Whitestone, don't go to the railroad station. Why not? Go to the airport. They'll be taking a plane. How do you know? If they go to Florida from here by train or by boat, the season will be over by the time they get there. Maybe. No maybes. I'm right. Head for the airport. We'll nail those dirty crooks before they get off the ground. Jim, this must be the Buchanan shack. Oh? See those marks in the snow? Yeah. Nothing but the snowmobile could have left those tracks. Uh, well, now that we're here, I can tell you something. What? You know, I wasn't so sure I could make it on these tennis rackets. <laughs> well, let's get them off. Well, it's fine with me. Yeah. Oh, boy, what a pleasure this is. Standing on my own feet. Come on, let's get out of this wind. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks. Ooh. Oh, here. Here's the walkie-talkie, Fred. Uh, you want to call the office? Huh? I'll take a look around. Right. Oh, I wish they'd left a the fire going. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Fred, there's some bags over here. What kind? From the bank. I've got the Federal Reserve stamped on them. Empty? Naturally. Calling K-62E. Calling K-62E. Come in. K-62E. Is that you, Fred? Yeah, Bill. Anything to report? That snowmobile was found a little while ago. Where? In a snowbank on the edge of Whitestone. Anything else? That's all. Thanks, Bill. So long. Did you hear that, Jim? Yeah. I think I know why they went there. Look at these things. Oh, travel folders. Yeah, and for Florida. That's where the brothers must be heading. Come on, Fred. Let's get to Whitestone ourselves. <laughs> Stop snowing, Calvin. The last time I looked out the window, it was high on the iron deer. Yeah. What happens to our plane? The airport fellow said as soon as it stops, they'll get one of those thingamajigs and clear the whole field. Oh, good, good. Must be the boy with our sandwich. Oh, I'll let him in. Hello, uh, Buck. Oh, goodness. Who is it, Buck? Hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Morgan. Out of the way. Go on in, baby. Right. Wait a minute now. Uh, hello there. Uh, we never did meet. Uh, I'm Calvin. We remember you. Robert. Yeah? If the Morgans are staying, uh, you'd better call down and have them send up some more sandwiches. Y'all can hear that phone. Huh? The only kind of sandwich we care about is plain lettuce. 
Well, I'm sure they have that. Eh? I mean money. Come on, hand it over. Go on and take it, Charlie. I'll keep it covered. Right. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, I, I must say, I think carrying a gun is a dreadful habit for a girl to get into. I got it, baby. Good. Open it. Honey, look. Yeah. That's not all your money. It is now. I'll take that gun this morning. Huh? What? Throw the cuffs on both of them, Freddy. Right, Jim. Hey, from the FBI. You're FBI. both under arrest. Uh, those people came in and stole our money, officer. We know what this is all about, Buchanan. Oh. Well, Calvin. Yeah? We better call downstairs and cancel those sandwiches. <laughs> Robert Buck Buchanan and his brother Calvin were tried, convicted, and sentenced to 15-year terms in prison. Charlie and Ruby Morgan were returned to the United States where a federal court found them guilty and sentenced them to 25 years each in the penitentiary. The clue which led Special Agent Taylor and Resident Agent Caldwell to the hotel room of the Buchanan brothers came from the Whitestone Airport. Checking there upon their arrival in town, Taylor learned that the Buchanans were booked on a plane which was delayed by bad weather. He also learned that they were to be notified as soon as the weather lifted. Notified at the Hotel Central. A trip to the hotel brought results which you have already witnessed. And so another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was closed. Another case and four more files. Files on each of the criminals involved. There is a difference, however. The cases were closed forever, but the files remain open. Remain that way so long as the criminal stays alive. For by keeping those files open... Your FBI can make a constant check on the number of enemies it has and on where some of them are. That phase of law enforcement is very important. That business of knowing where the criminal population of the country is. For it enables your FBI to fight the war against crime 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And with such a schedule, victory over those criminals is possible. Victory for your FBI and thus for you, the decent citizens of the nation. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, a few words from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Mr. Keating, I'd just like to tell our listeners that they don't put themselves under the slightest obligation by asking an Equitable representative for this fact-finding chart. There are no strings attached to it. The Equitable representative in your neighborhood will be glad to bring you a copy and help you and your wife fill it out. Make a note to phone one of us equitable men soon. Or send a postcard, care of this radio station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A dramatic recount of an ex-convict who tried to go straight. Its subject, armed robbery. Its title, The Innocent Hostage. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's program was transcribed, and the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were B. Benaderet, Herb Butterfield, Ed Gargan, Bill Johnstone, Eddie Marr, and Henry Morgan. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The... Innocent Hostage on This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.